Welcome back to Picking Winners. I am Tony. That is Nate. We made it. The fantasy playoffs are over, hopefully. We can finally sit back, Nate, put our feet up, and enjoy. Fo- oh, wait. It's week 18. God knows what's going to happen in some of these matchups. We'll get into those matchups uh, specifically and give you our picks or our best uh, effort at those picks. Yeah. Um, we'll drop a couple best bets in there. But first, how we doing, Nate? I'm good, man. I dropped a couple games last week that I thought were bogus, but sure. it is what it is. Um, week 18's fun one. Uh, there's a lot to it's be wild. It's funny because there's so many scenarios in the NFL this year where, like, so many teams are still alive for the playoffs right now. Yeah, you know, and seeding is still a thing that could be, you know, dependent determining where someone may get a home game in the second week or does. Matthew Stafford and the Los Angeles Rams go to Detroit to play Jared Goff and the Lions. Like, that's a fun, interesting matchup. That's what we want to see. Um, I think it would be interesting. But uh, a lot of people sitting out, a lot of people with incentives to work for. So it's mm-hmm. going to be a fun week uh, just watching football. Yeah, I, I will speak to all of the uh, the playoff implications as we go through these matchups. So I, I have all those written down. Uh, all right. For last week, we both fared pretty well you mentioned you what you dropped a couple games but i ended up going 12 and 4 nate you went 10 and 6 i did manage positive i was in the green 1.6 units on the week should have been a lot better uh nate you weren't far behind uh you were down just 1.8 um one game here really stood out that put us behind the sticks last week uh that was the cardinals at the eagles we lost 7.2 units alone on that game and it's one we probably honestly should have been more cautious about in hindsight Phillies drop four or five. They're not stopping anyone. The offense doesn't look great. There might be some locker room turmoil. Who knows? Um, team just doesn't seem to be firing on all cylinders. Other losses for us on the week were the Bucks, Seahawks, Vikings, Falcons, and Raiders. Um, I do have some brief notes on each. Tampa was shut down by the Saints because, of course, they were. Uh, and the Saints just went off offensively. Seattle's defense continued to struggle. Najee steamrolled uh, Seattle's defense. I think Pittsburgh had over 200 yards rushing. Minnesota. We just got wrong Um, with the Vikings starting Jaron Hall. It should have been an indicator there that we should have went the other way. Maybe Uh, Nick Mullins was definitely the play would have given them the best chance to win. And the Falcons, they had turnover issues. Of course, Tyler Haneke throwing three interceptions, not going to get it done. Any commentary on those games before I get into our best bets from last week? You know, all year I sat here and I say, you know, this is the most likely favorite to get upset. And usually I just go with it because I have some gut feeling in me, right? Yeah. And last week I'm sitting here by myself and I'm like, you know, Arizona's got a legit shot here. Like, mm-hmm. and I just didn't go with it and said lose six something. And then I'm down 1.8 on the week. Uh, Would have been a good five, six, you know, in the positive or whatever like mm-hmm. that to really boost me. But man, like, I don't know what it's been like this year, but I've just had this these gut feelings of like these big favorites. And um, I didn't even bet it in my personal account either, which really, really bums me out. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. And we move on. Yeah, that one stung for sure. Uh, So for best bets last week, I took Puka Nakua over 68 and a half receiving yards. He's closing in on some rookie records um, and he's just become an integral part of the Rams offense. So it seemed like low hanging fruit. That one hit Nate. You took Mike Evans, anytime score and the bucks shit the bed. Kind of mentioned that against the saints last week. You hate to see it. But it's Baker Mayfield, who is ranked inside the top 10 amongst quarterbacks. So maybe some regression was due. Mm. Uh, Any commentary on the best bets before we get into our Week 18 picks? I probably should have just gone with the catches and the yards because those were pretty clear that they were going to force him the ball rather than hoping for a touchdown. But, you know, maybe, you know, whatever. Mike Evans is going to be the all-time Tampa Bay Bucks leading scorer. He's got to score three touchdowns this week. So whatever those odds are. You know, like you're saying there's a chance they're playing at Carolina, (laughs) but weather is is probably going to be really bad this weekend on the East Coast. So I doubt that that ends up happening. They are down, what, their two top corners, Horn and uh, I forget the guys. So Dante Dante Jackson will be covering. So maybe one, maybe one ATS. I don't know about Mm, three. I'm not Uh, fucking with it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Uh, All right, week 18 picks, time to deliver. Uh, And I am terrified because the final week is – Anyone, any seasoned NFL fans know can have a lot of variance and can be very tough to predict. What the NFL did was give us an entire slate of divisional matchups in the final week of the season. So there are some games that matter that make this a tad bit easier, a little bit easier. As we go through these, I'll highlight if a team is playing for a playoff spot. Uh, And as a reminder, the lines we'll be talking about are from FanDuel. 
First matchup, this is a Saturday game. We do have two Saturday matchups. It's going to be Pittsburgh at Baltimore. The Steelers are favored by three. For the playoff implication uh, implications here, Baltimore, they've clinched the AFC's number one seed. Pittsburgh, though, they need some help. So Pittsburgh clinches a playoff berth with a win and a Buffalo loss, win and a Jacksonville loss or tie, win in a Houston Indy tie, or a tie, and then a, uh, a couple other scenarios where there's just a lot that I'm not going to get into. So Pittsburgh playing for something here, Baltimore likely going to be resting a lot of their starters. What do you got? You know, we talked about it before the season about how this division was going to have three teams in the playoffs. Um, the only thing was that I sat there and said that Baltimore was going to be the <laughs> team left out. <laughs> And they're the best team in the AFC. Number one. Oh, my in. gosh. I don't know if you've heard this stat, Tony, but uh, in 17 years, Mike Tomlin hasn't had a losing season. Uh, probably really? Factored, I've never heard that before. Probably should have factored that into last week that they were going to win a ball game. Um, it's interesting because a lot of people are calling for us, you know, hey, Mike Tomlin's got to get fired, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And then there's mm-hmm. players coming out. Uh, I think I saw a clip from, like, the Kelsey Brothers podcast, which – doesn't seem to be as fun anymore. Uh, it's kind of comical, but um, where they're like, you know, the media is dumb, this, this, this. And it's like, you know, it is something to say that, you know, to, to not have a losing season in almost two decades in the NFL is pretty remarkable. Sure. But the NFL is not about winning nine games a season. Like nine games or eight games back when it was 16, going 500, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's about winning and getting into the playoffs and Super Bowls, and that's not what they're doing right now. And I think he's done all he's can do, all that he can do there. With this game, um, I'm going to go with Baltimore in this game. I get that Lamar sitting. I get that OBJ sitting. There's going to be some other players sitting on the defense. I think Kyle Hamilton will be out. A lot of their stars on the defense will be out yeah. too. Um, Mason Rudolph's had two great games. They've put up 30 points in two games with Mason Rudolph. And he's going to be the starter this week. Pittsburgh is favored in this game. But you know what? There's this thing. And it it used to be with the Oakland Raiders, now the Las Vegas Raiders, where they really care about the preseason. Where they're fighting for preseason Super Bowls, right? And it's always a joke every single year that, hey, the Raiders went undefeated. Or they went 3-1. <laughs> and one, Or yeah. they're, you know, now it's 3-3 three and three or 2-1 and one or whatever it is. Baltimore is the same way. When you watch Baltimore in the preseason they're there to win the ball game and they play it just like they're going to win a ball game i think taylor hunt uh tyler huntley uh is a pretty serviceable quarterback we saw him almost take this team to the you know a playoff i guess you would say run last year when lamar was out he's played serviceable with lamar out um i wonder if they're going to play dalvin cook in this game just to get him some reps with the offense and all that kind of stuff prior to the playoffs get them used to some of the mm-hmm. scheme and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm going to take Baltimore to win this game. There's nothing that the fans of Baltimore want more than to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I think the crowd will still be rowdy. They'll still be into it. It's going to be terrible weather this weekend on the East coast. Like there could be snow everywhere all across the East coast. Um, yeah. I think in the DC area, they were talking about, you know, five to nine inches or something like that as well, too. I don't know if that's changed over the last day or so, but um, I have some inside sources on the weather on the East Coast, and they talk about it all the time. But I'll take Baltimore to win it. Uh, I think this is one of those games where Pittsburgh just, hey, you got over 500, cool, you know, whatever like that. Mason Rudolph, welcome back to the NFL, um, and Baltimore wins. He's playing like a man that has nothing to lose. So mm-hmm. I, I do enjoy seeing that. Uh, Give them the best shot to win. But Baltimore, they got nothing to play for here. Like, I don't even know if Tyler Huntley plays the whole game. You want your backup in the playoffs, right? I do agree. I think Delvin Cook will get a little bit of run, but I think they're largely going to be resting their guys uh, for this playoff run that they should get pretty deep into, right? But <clears throat> Pittsburgh has a lot on the line. Uh, if they win and one of either Buffalo or Jacksonville drops their matchups, with their both, those are both very likely to happen. Um, really no idea what's going to happen in Buffalo, Miami. We'll get to that game later. Jacksonville, Trevor Lawrence is not trending in the right direction. I think he's dealing with a couple injuries. So Tennessee is kind of in a similar situation where they can end their division rivals uh, season, right? So not sure what's going to happen in that matchup. So I think Pittsburgh has a real shot at getting into the postseason. I think I'm going to lean the other way, Nate, go with Pittsburgh on this one. And I don't know, the line so far seem to agree uh, with that take, but we're starting it off with uh, opposing ends here. I like it. 
Mm-hmm. Next matchup, Houston at Indy. Uh, Texans are favored by one and a half over unders at 47.5. So a couple of scenarios here. Houston, they clinch the AFC South division with a win and a Jacksonville loss or tie. Uh, Houston can also clinch a playoff berth with a win and, or just a win. Sorry, that's a wild card spot. They can also get in with a tie, Jacksonville loss, and a Pittsburgh loss. Indy also has some stuff to play for, so this is going to be a competitive game. Indy can clinch the AFC South with a win and a Jacksonville loss or tie. Indy tie plus Jacksonville loss. But, and Indy can also get in the playoffs uh, as a wild card team with a win and then a tie and a Pittsburgh loss or tie. What do you have on this one? Because both teams are going to be playing for the W. I have a lot of gratitude that I don't host this episode of the show because I don't have to repeat all of that kind of stuff. What and a pain out in the what ass. the hell I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've said it all year. I think that this Indianapolis Colts secondary is absolute dog water. And it's pretty nice that the Houston Texans struggle to run the ball. Uh, they've ran the ball okay as of late, but they are definitely going to be a pass first team. Um, CJ Stroud back into the mix. He got a little, you know, his, his feet under him a little bit last week. Yep. And I think that they go into Indianapolis and steal one from the Indianapolis Colts. Um, there's something about this Houston Texans team. You know, it's it's some it's something to be said about what coaching can bring to an organization cuz they don't have a good roster. The Houston Texans just don't have a good roster. Uh, but they added little pieces here and there whether it's veteran leadership at the linebacker position, young talent on the edge. Uh, obviously CJ Stroud it is what it is, but bringing in Bobby Sloak as an offensive coordinator, D'Amico Ryans as the head coach, someone who can identify with it, someone who's fr- played at Houston, like the culture really, you know, can change a lot and bring a lot out of players that otherwise um, we wouldn't really want to be talking about. It mm-hmm. would be guys like the Carolina Panthers. Um, so I will go with that culture over the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I, it's just a gut feel. I think the Colts have a better roster overall, but I'm going to take Houston Texans. I think they got something going on. Yeah, so this was probably one of the more difficult matchups on the slate to pick. Uh, this and one or two others I kind of lingered on for a while. Both teams have their season on the line. Both teams wildly outperformed expectations. I think that's fair to say at this point. But if I'm looking at this and asking myself which team is punching above their weight class probably more right now, it's Indy. I like what Shane Steichen's done. You mentioned the coaching uh, for Houston. I think Indy probably say a little bit of the same, you know, running their backup quarterback out here. Um, I think Houston has more consistent answers with CJ Stroud uh, and that defense highlighted, you know, by Will Anderson. Um, This game, it just, I'm with you. It feels like it's a Houston game. Um, I know it is at Indy. It's on the road for Houston. It's a rookie quarterback, uh, rookie head coach, but I, I, my gut feeling says Houston, I would like to see them in the playoffs more than I would like to see Indy. I think that would be a lot more fun. So yeah, both of us on board with the Texans in this matchup. Mm-hmm. All right, moving on to the Sunday game. So we'll start with the early slate. The first game we have here is Cleveland at Cincinnati. The Browns have clinched a playoff berth. They are going to be the top wild card seed. Cincinnati, nothing but pride. is That's all they're playing for here. Uh, who's favorite here? Cincinnati by seven and a half over under. It's one of the lower ones again. Maybe have some weather to 37.5. What you got for this one? Yeah, I think it's just stars that do it for me in this game. And uh, we're going back to whoever's playing quarterback for the Cleveland Browns that used to play quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. But uh, I think this will be number five that plays for the Cleveland Browns this week uh, on the season. Like fifth different quarterback that they'll have. And they have a playoff mm-hmm. berth, right? I think they clinched four seed. Um four or five but i in the fifth seed so i'm just going to take cincinnati and since cincinnati i think i don't think that this is like a big rivalry right i get that they are both ohio teams but this doesn't feel as big as like pittsburgh baltimore to me Mm -hmm. because there's not like a lot of history of these teams being good together um so i'll take cincinnati to win at home yeah they have locked in the browns have that number five seed this season, they've some sta- sustained some pretty devastating injuries, uh, which is why I think they'll be very cautious with their guys on both offense and defense in a game that literally for them means nothing. Uh, for both teams, means nothing, really. Um, I'm also taking Cincinnati. And Nate, if the Bengals do win every AFC, uh, win every AFC North team 
will finish the 2023 season with a record of nine and eight or better. So I think one of our calls was this would be one of the better divisions, if not the best division in the NFL. And yep. I mean, even with some injuries, right, to quarter, key quarterbacks here, they all still finished above nine and eight. That's that's wild. Yeah, wild. All right, second game here we have is Minnesota. At Detroit, the Lions favored at home by a field goal over unders at 45.4 for playoff implications. Detroit, congratulations. You've clinched the NFC North Division title. Round of applause for them and Jared Goff. Minnesota, they can clinch a playoff berth with a win and some help. They need Green Bay to lose, Seattle to lose, Tampa Bay, and also New Orleans in two different scenarios. But three of those four teams, or all four teams to lose, and also get a win here against Detroit, which... I don't have, but what do you got for this game? I'll take Detroit. I don't know. Like, I don't really know if they're playing everybody in this game, but uh, I'm not going to take anything that Minnesota's doing with a grain of salt no. anymore. Um, so I'll just take Detroit to win. I don't really know why. It's just uh, I have no faith in the Minnesota Vikings to do anything uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, yeah. Rumors are that they're going to sign Kirk Cousins to a two-year, like seventy-something million-dollar contract. Right? What? Props to Kirk Cousins, man. He's done the NFL better than anybody's ever done the NFL. I get that the guys never won a Super Bowl or anything like that, but he's going to go down as one of the wealthiest dudes that just bet on himself over and over and over and over and over. Right? Played through contract year after contract year after mm-hmm. con- like never Tag- holding tagged out a couple times, tagged everything like that. That dude's going to walk away with bands. Um, but uh, it doesn't matter in this game, so I'll take the Lions. Yeah, Detroit has the division locked up. Uh, What they don't have locked up is the opportunity to leapfrog Dallas for the number two seed. The Lions play in the early window, so they can get a win in this one and put that pressure on Dallas, who does play in the afternoon set of games. I'm taking the Lions, uh, and they might rest some starters after. I think they'll play like maybe a half, maybe like some type of preseason thing, but I don't think Minnesota's playing to win. Uh, Didn't feel like it last week. Jaron Hall did not look like he was prepared. Maybe they had to just see what they got in the guy, but I I don't know. It didn't feel like they were trying to win that game, honestly, with as long as they let him in there, too. Um, but, how yeah, the much, line, go ahead. How much does their coach hate Josh Dobbs? <laughs> Josh Dobbs. Maybe Nick Mullins for throwing that one pick two weeks ago. I don't know. Like, one bad game out of Josh Dobbs, yeah. and it was just like, screw it. I feel like he just yeah. didn't even want him there, and then the team traded for him or something like that, too, right? Like, yeah. Like, yo, man, what are you doing? Like, you could have probably made the playoffs. I mean, coaches aren't immune to to tilting and making bad decisions, right? Uh, They were were hot with Kirk Cousins right when he got injured. So, you know, you win one or two more, you're in the thick of things right in that wild card hunt. So maybe he just just made a bad decision, pulled the trigger a little too fast on on getting Dobbs out of there. But, yeah, I I thought he was the best quarterback they had. Mullins, he's fine, but I think those two are just kind of more the same. But with Dobbs, you get what you get on the ground. Yeah. Anyways, moving on now, Jacksonville at Tennessee. The uh, Jaguars are road favorites. They get three and a half over unders, kind of low. It's at 41.5. couple of playoff scenarios in this one. Jaguars can clinch uh, AFC, the FC South division with a win. They can also clinch it with a tie and then a Indy Houston tie. Those things obviously unlikely, but it is something I'm reading. <laughs> They can also clinch the Jaguars can of playoff birds, so a wild card with the Jacksonville tie, Pittsburgh loss or tie, and then a Pittsburgh loss, Denver loss, and then Houston Indy doesn't end in a tie, so someone loses that game. Uh, what do you got for this game? Um, I have a preseason bet that I need to hit. So, oh. um, I have I don't even know how to say this dude's last name. Their linebacker Oluwokun, right? Four said Oluokan. I don't know yeah. how to say his name right, but the dude's a tackle monster or whatever mm-hmm. like that. Um, but I have a preseason bet, um, a future for him to be the leading tackler in the NFL. And right now he's four tackles behind uh, Zaire Alexander for, I think it's Zaire Alexander, right, for the Indianapolis Colts middle linebacker. Um, mm-hmm. So I really need that to hit. So I'm really hoping that. This is a close game, so they're uh, Zaire Franklin, um, and then he. I was looking it up right now. Yeah, I think he's like half a tackle or two tackles behind Bobby Wagner, but not really worried about that against Arizona. So, um, really hoping that Houston just airs it out, and maybe Indianapolis can keep it close, but just throw bombs. Don't go over the middle of the field, and then Tennessee, being a heavy run team, 
And Jacksonville being one of the better run defenses in the NFL, I think that Jacksonville ends up winning this game based off of that. The way to beat Jacksonville is through the air, and that is not something that is a strength of the Tennessee Titans. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with Jacksonville, regardless of who ends up playing quarterback for them, whether it's Trevor Lawrence or Blaine Gabbert or whoever the hell is there. C.J. Beathard. C.J. Beathard, not Blaine Gabbert. That's someone (laughs) else. He's playing for someone else this weekend, I think. So Kansas City? Yeah, Chiefs? yeah, yeah. Chiefs? He's playing for the Keys, Chiefs. I was looking up that dude who's playing for the Chiefs, and that's why it was stuck in my head. But everybody who's been a Niner, uh, basically, so <laughs> they're all the backups in the league. Yeah, but there's, um, there's a lot of them. But I like that. I think this is going to be. I think this is a big under candidate. I don't see either one of these teams, you know, scoring mm-hmm. 24, 28 points in this game. So I'll take Jacksonville on the road. I don't like it, but if it's close. Um, that means that Tennessee is able to run the ball and they're able to play a little bit of defense. And I like that for my future as well. So <laughs> please pray for me. I need four more tackles than Zaire Franklin for the Indianapolis Colts. There you go. A little selfish of you, Nate. Uh, this one is for all of the marbles for the Jaguars, a win and they get the division and a home playoff game, a loss. And they're potentially out of the playoffs altogether, uh, for what was, hopefully going to be like an up and coming team up and coming season with Peterson and Lawrence there, but I'm going to take Jacksonville uh, against a Titans team that has a very hard time scoring 20 points. They failed to do that 11 times this season. I believe Tannehill's going for them. So I don't like that. Uh, Give me the Jaguars as well. Next game here, the jets at the Patriots. So new England home favorites, they get one and a half over under good God. It's low. It's 30.5. Who you got? If it wasn't clear, uh, no playoff implications. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least we got that right in the preseason, right? Yeah. Um, this is probably a matchup. So I don't like Robert Sala as a head coach for the New York Jets, and he's going to get another year. Probably. And I tweeted out on, I think it was my own personal account uh, the other day, It was like last Sunday, and I was like, the fact that, like, Robert Sala can thank Aaron Rodgers for another year of coaching. Because this dude has the longest leash ever. Like, I get that your defense is good, but your defense is, you know how hard it is to miss on defensive players when you're drafting in the top five every single year or the top ten every single year? Like, those dudes are pretty much money, right? Like, you know what you're getting out of that. Where you fail in the top 10 is when you're picking quarterbacks and they don't work out because you have nobody to coach them, right? It's not difficult to – it's hard to say. It's not that difficult to hit on a defensive player at the front end of the draft. Mm -hmm. But Robert Sala needs to go. Like, he's just not a head coach, good defensive coordinator or whatever like that. But um, teams who win Super Bowls have offensive head coaches. So – um, but he won't get fired. Who knows what's going to happen with Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick, but I'm going to go with who I think is a better quarterback. And I think that is in New York right now. So I'm going to go with the jets on the road in new England. Um, new England, I don't know what they're doing. They win a couple games. Like they still could yeah. be, which is kind of nice, right? Like you always think about teams that are tanking and all this kind of stuff. And we really haven't seen that this year in the NFL. It seems like everybody's played all the way to the end of the season. We, even when they should be tanking to get number one, number two, <laughs> several you know, teams should be yeah, several teams. Right. And new England being one of them. But I think the jets end up getting one of these like little moral victories and they feel good. And then you can hear that fuck Aaron Rodgers on the television every fucking day or every Tuesday. Like that dude's pissing me off too. It's annoying. I used to like Aaron Rodgers, um, but it's become more annoying and annoying and annoying. Yeah. Like I hate entitledness. So, yeah. um, but I'm going to take the jets to win this game. And then next year for them to win less than seven and a half games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was easy, easy under for us this year. Yeah. For Aaron Rodgers, it was probably a sign when his family, like disowned him. Uh, we all probably should have taken note, but a little, a little late on that. Uh, but for this game means literally nothing. Maybe the Patriots are looking at their standing amongst the other four and 12 teams. There's three of them all vying for their order in the top five pick the top five picks, right. For next year's draft. But I think Bill Belichick and just the players in that locker room have a little bit too much pride for doing something like that. So I will cautiously get behind new England in this one. It is at Gillette. 
the Jets have been struggling to do absolutely anything on offense. Um, don't like this one. This was another one I kind of stared at for a while. Uh, there's really no <laughs> analysis uh, for either team that can support either side. So whatever, either Nate or I, we're 50-50 on this one. So someone's getting a W uh, for the season-long standings. Imagine your analysis is like, we got the number 30 DVOA against, you know, yeah, offensive team on the, so on the year to the 29th. And, you know, they're averaging, you know, 0. Yeah. 0.7 yards per play. And the other team's averaging 1.2 yards per – like, that's, that's what you have to <laughs> – you don't even have to look it up and you just know I don't even want to see it. You don't. It's gross. It'll make you throw up a little bit. All yeah. right, next matchup. Atlanta at uh, New Orleans. Uh, Saints are favored by three at home. Over-unders at 42.5. couple of playoff implications here. Atlanta, they can clinch the NFC South division title. Please, God, don't let that happen. For the love of God, get Arthur Smith out of there. They need to lose. Uh, but they can clinch the title with a win here against the Saints and then a Tampa loss uh, in their matchup with Carolina. New Orleans, they can take the division title with a win and a Tampa loss or a tie in a Tampa loss. So a lot is hinged on the Tampa Carolina matchup, which we'll get to next. And then uh, new Orleans can also clinch the playoff berth with a win Seattle loss or tie green Bay loss or tie or a tie Seattle loss, green Bay loss wild card, likely not going to happen. So what do you have for this disgusting matchup? Resentment. Uh, that's what <laughs> I got. Yeah. The freaking Falcons hurt me really bad last week. And Tampa hurt me really bad playing this New Orleans Saints team. I think they both stink. Can't wait for both of their coaches to get the shit canned in this yep. offseason. I don't like when people lose their jobs. I'm not saying that. But for for what we want to see from an entertainment product on television Thursdays, because both of these teams are going to play a lot of Thursday games next mm-hmm. year, um, we need new blood in the locker rooms i wanted to pick atlanta in this but i cannot do it anymore because i cannot live finally i cannot live with three (laughs) hours of uh anxiety Mm -hmm. i have no more fingernails to chew um i have no skin around my fingernails to chew like cuticles are all gone because i just bite them every time i'm watching this team play football yeah so i'm going to go with new orleans both of these teams stink they should be relegated to the USFL or the XFL or whatever their combined league is. And if they win, then they can get back in the NFL, New Orleans for me. To be fair, these coaches getting fired, they're millionaires. They're not hurting for money. And usually there's like some guaranteed in there too. So they didn't have to work to make money like the following year. Mm -hmm. Um, But for this game, the Falcons stink. You laid that out. But somehow they have a chance to win the (laughs) NFC South. Again, please God, any God. Don't it's let gonna that happen. happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna give happen. the Saints the strength to not let that happen, because again, we need Arthur Smith out of the league or back as you know a coordinator or something. Um, but yeah, both of these teams need Tampa to lose to win the division, but they both would need to win this game or at least not lose if you're the Saints. I think the Saints are the better team. They are at home. They have that edge, and they're coming off a pretty good performance against the aforementioned Bucks. So they had a good division matchup. It's another division matchup. I think they'll carry a little bit of that momentum in here. I'm also taking the Saints. Uh, final Sunday early matchup, Tampa Bay at Carolina. The Bucks are road favorites. They get four and a half over-unders at 36.5. The only playoff implication here is for Tampa, they can clinch the NFC South Division title with a win. They can also clinch it with a Tampa Bay tie. Or I'm sorry, Tampa Bay ties it and a New Orleans uh, loss or tie. What do you have for this one? I'm never picking Carolina to win a football game. Have we um, at all this year? I don't think we've picked one. I don't know. I we'll have to go through it when we recap this next week. Sure. Um, but yeah, I'm never picking Carolina to win a game, which means they'll probably end up winning this game. But I'm going with Tampa Bay. <laughs> don't say that, please. Please don't say that. Atlanta's got to win win the division <laughs> somehow. Oh God! All right, yeah. I've got Tampa, but uh, that performance last week against the Saints uh, that even made Week 18 a thing for the Bucks. Um, and that scares me. It scares me a little bit. I think Baker mostly gets his act together. It was pretty terrible last year um, against this terrible Panthers team. Uh, again, they're down, I think, two corners, maybe some weather there, but it is in uh, Carolina, so not quite the northeast part of the, the coast there, right? So I think the Bucks will get out of this one with a division title and at least one beer spilled on a fan by David Tepper. There you go. 
Yeah. All right. Moving into the Sunday afternoon slate of games. First one is Chicago at Green Bay. Packers are favored at home over under. It's a high one for these guys. It's at 45. Uh, playoff implications. Green Bay, they can clinch a wild card spot with a win. Um, and there's five scenarios where they can get in if they tie or lose as well. I'm not going to go over all of those. Thank you. Uh, it's easy, though. They win and they're in. What you got? I got them losing. I think that this Bears team is on the up and up. And what would be better than having to deal with Matt Eberflus for another year in the NFL because he ends up winning a game on the road at the end. Justin Fields plays well. You know, um, Justin Fields is also playing for a lot in this game. While the Bears are not, he's playing for whether that's, you know, convincing Chicago to keep him there. I think he wants to stay in Chicago. I think he wants to be a bear long term or, you know, marketing himself for another team next year. Um, So I'm going to take Justin Fields to do enough to beat Green Bay on the road in Lambeau, because I think that what Green Bay did last week is kind of just smoke and mirrors against that Minnesota team. I get that Jordan loves playing better. I get that they're Mm -hmm. passing the ball a lot better, Mm -hmm. but I am not a believer in that. I don't believe in Matt LaFleur. I thought that he would be one of the first head coaches fired this year, and it didn't happen um, because they went on a little bit of a run and they've progressed, but I'll take Chicago. So you're not feeling the love. That's what you're saying. I don't feel any love. All right. So I am looking at the quarterback play and the offense of Green Bay. Jordan Love, you mentioned they have been a little hot. Uh, he's peeled off 18 touchdowns to just three interceptions with a 104 passer rating over the Packers' last eight games. It's pretty good sample size, and that's you know that's recent, right? That's not the first half of the season. I'm not sure if Christian Watson goes in this one. Um, he's had two limited practices this week, and then he just had a DNP on Friday. So today, when we're recording this, 5 January. Uh, but Jaden Reed looks good to go. Uh, he's been limited all week, but uh, he is trending in the right direction. This one is also at Lambeau. So in a game, I'm already slightly leaning Green Bay. I give them uh, the additional edge there. I'm taking the Packers to win and get into the playoffs. We need Matt Eberflus gone as well. I don't know if just if they move on from Justin Fields or they keep him another year. It makes more sense to just reset uh, the quarterback, like the rookie deal. But I think if Eberflus is gone, that team probably has more success or has a better shot at developing these guys. Mm-hmm. All right, moving into the second game here, Denver at Las Vegas. The Raiders are home favorites. They get three over-unders at 37.5. And no playoff implications. What you got? I'm taking the Las Vegas Raiders. I think that Denver is about to go through one of the worst periods that Denver's ever had. I don't know if players are going to want to be with this team going forward. Guys who are free agents coming in this yep. coming this year, right? No matter what what happens with the quarterback position, whoever they bring in, because they're going to bring somebody else in, mm-hmm. um, and they're going to let Russ, Russ walk. But <clears throat> I would, I don't think that Russell Wilson goes back there next year. I think that I wouldn't. Relationship's pretty much done. Um, like I could see him if they don't cut him or release him right or trade him that he just retires and just says, fuck it. I'm not going to play here anymore. Um, from the way that he was getting treated and stuff like that, uh, by the organization as well. And Las Vegas, there's a lot of players that have come out about how they want Antonio Pierce to be their head coach next year. And there's no, been no like, yeah, we're going to keep Pierce next year, you know, hire him on full time and all this kind of stuff. Hopefully you hear it in the next week or so. But when you have all of your star players and Devonte Adams, who was, you know, throwing fits left and right, and you disappointed him by getting yep. rid of Carr and all this kind of stuff, like you got to have a win for this team. And I mean, the culture in Las Vegas is coming around. It feels really fun. It's fun to watch. You want to root for him. I want to get black air force ones. Um, <laughs> And so I'm going to take Las Vegas to win this game because I think that the entire Denver team is checked out minus guys who are on the fringe of making a roster next year. And those guys are not going to be good enough to beat this Las Vegas Raiders team. Yeah, this feels eerily similar to the was it Rich Basaccia a few years ago before Josh yep. McDaniels. Yeah, he only went off on I, like one I eight they, straight games. <laughs> yeah, they had a lot of success. I can't remember if they made the playoffs that year. 
Um, obviously Las Vegas isn't making the playoffs this year, but he had a lot of success. And what do they do? They bring in Josh McDaniels. Mm -hmm. So I feel like something like Adam Gase is going to get another shot to coach in the NFL. And he's going to, he's going to get hired over Pierce or something. Ron Rivera. (laughs) Ron Rivera. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for this game, I I thought Denver looked God awful with Jared Stidham under center last week. Luckily they're playing the chargers with Easton stick on the other side, right? The Raiders on the other hand, they don't look great either. But what they have going for them is a players type coach who does have that locker room. Uh, and Pierce is coaching potentially for a job, as you mentioned, in 2024. Does he get one? I don't know. I hope so. Seems like he's done a pretty good job with a backup quarterback or the backup to the backup and not the best defensive unit. But for this matchup, I, I think they want it more. I am also leaning towards Las Vegas. Next matchup here, Philly at the Giants. The Eagles are road favorites. Uh, They get five and a half. If this was a competent team they were playing, they probably would not. Over-unders at 41.5. Playoff implications on the Philly side. They clinched the NFC East division title with a win and a Dallas loss or tie or a tie and a Dallas loss. What do you got for this one? I'm going to take Philly. Um they seem to be in shambles. They've seemed to be in shambles <laughs> yeah. for a little while too, right? Like, and you kind of knew it as the season was going on where it's like, oh, they keep winning these like really close games. They're not running the ball well. And then it looks like Jalen Hurts is just always hurt because during the middle of the season, they stopped tush pushing, right? Like third and two, third and three, you knew what was coming. Two straight of those, get the first down and keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they're just trying not to get that play band or whatever it is but um but they just don't look good at all but you know dayball is jealous of reporter's hair i don't know if you saw that clip out there i don't know do you see that tony i think i saw a piece of that yeah yeah and like he the reporter was asking him a question and he basically says sorry i was just looking at your hair and the report what are you jealous like <laughs> dude dayball's a pretty big dude and you sound like you're like 130 pounds five foot mm-hmm. seven dude but um but there's there's no playmakers on the giants like they're all really short yardage guys and the way to beat philly is to throw the ball down the field and I don't think that they're going to be able to throw the ball down the field. I don't care who's playing quarterback, whether it's Tyrod or DeVito or uh, even if Daniel Jones were to come back, you know, with a with one knee. But I'll take Philly to win the game. Yeah, this one would absolutely not surprise me if Philly somehow just implodes mid-game and the Giants just run all over that defense. The only thing Sirianni has going for him is that Dallas plays in the same window of games, so they need to win not knowing the Cowboys' outcome. I think Philly pulls through as well and gets the win, but it's a scary proposition. Um, You mentioned their recent struggles. They've lost four or five. Uh, At the very least, we're only – uh, paying 2.3 units here versus the <laughs> 6.2 last week. So this one won't bite us. It's actually 2.4 now. Uh, so I don't know. I, I'm leaning Philly, but after last week and you know a couple of the losses, like it's 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 scary. Um, yeah. Probably in real life, staying away from this one. Uh, moving on here, Seattle at Arizona. Uh, Seattle favored by a field goal on the road. Over under high. It's at 47.5. Playoff scenarios: the Seahawks. They can clinch a playoff berth, so a wild card with a win, Green Bay loss or tie, and then there's a couple tie scenarios uh, where they need some help. What do you got for this matchup? I spent a lot of time on this, and by like a lot of time, I mean like ten more minutes than I did on any other one. Wow! Um, but it, but it it definitely, I was, I was confused on what to do because mm-hmm. I think that Kyler still presents a lot of problems for a lot of people. He's also competing for whether or not this team drafts a quarterback or not, or they move on from Kyler Murray. Right. So he has something there. And I think that he's, when he's on the field, he's pretty dynamic. And I think he's pretty good. Um, It's just that he can't stay on the field and that's a problem, but I'm going to take Seattle to win this game on the road in Arizona. Um, I think just coaching is better. In this game, Mm -hmm. like Pete Carroll, he'll chew the shit out of some, you know, double bubble. I'm pretty, he, what kind of gum do you think he chews? Is it like double bubble, spear mint, regular mint, big red? (laughs) Juicy, I think it's juicy fruit. Juicy fruit. He's probably like a zebra guy, zebra gum. Um, Oh, God. Yeah. 
he looks like a guy who would choose even gum. Um, but I'll take them. I think they have more weapons on the offensive side when it comes to the receiver core. And I think that can cause some problems for Arizona. So give me DK Metcalf to be able to own this Arizona secondary. There you go. I'm also taking the Seahawks. They do need help to get in, but they have to handle their business and their business is winning this game. Uh, Green Bay plays at the same time. So as far as Seattle is concerned, just like in the Philly matchup with Dallas, uh, it's win or go home. So I've also got the Seahawks. You can get three Next. three teams in from the NFC West and then three teams oh, in from the AFC East. That would be pretty cool. That'd or AFC North. That'd be cra- North. That'd be crazy. All right. Next matchup here, Kansas City at the Chargers. Chargers are favored. We assume Kansas City is going to be resting everybody. Uh, LA is favored by three and a half over unders low, which also indicates Chiefs are probably resting some players. It's at 35.5. Playoff implications, the Chiefs have clinched the AFC West. Nothing for the Chargers. What you got? The Chargers have a special teams coordinator as their head coach right now as the interim. Um, There's never been a special teams guy who's won football games in the NFL, and I don't think it starts now. I get that there's no Patrick Mahomes, there's no Kadarius Tony. Shout out to Kadarius Tony. There's no Rasheed Rice. I think he's already been ruled out as well. They'll probably sit a lot of guys on the defensive end as well because they really need everybody. Um, but I'm not going to pick anything with this Los Angeles Chargers team. I don't believe in them. Um, this is going to be the game. This, you know, this is like a fun. If you're, if you like, if you got some disposable income, right? Say you just placed whatever men cashed in a poker tournament or something you got a little bit extra cash right even okay and and you want to parlay that into something right this is the game where kansas city doesn't drop a damn pass like completion percentage for blaine gabbert's going to be like 95 and all these other guys sky Moore's going to get some run uh maybe mvs gets a little bit i don't know if he does or not uh what's his name john ross is that he's on the team I don't know. Just, if he's Justin playing. Ross. Justin Ross. Justin Watson. Uh, no, they have a Ross on their team. There's a like, Ross. It's a Justin with like a T Y N or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that, right? Like these dudes are just gonna ball out, and then everybody's gonna be like, once you know, MVS drops a pass, or you know, Justin Watson drops a pass later on, or Tony, they're gonna be calling for these fifth, sixth, seventh wide receivers on this team to be playing. Like you have these guys, and they don't drop passes; they catch everything, you know. And I think that's what ends up happening in this game. It's a fun way uh, to bet, like, some of these guys who are going to be playing. Um, so I, I'm i all about the Kansas City Chiefs this weekend. Justin Ross is an interesting one. Yeah. To see him finally run more than, like, one route. So All these guys that we um, thought or, like, people thought were going to be a big deal because everybody's looking for the next replacement, you know, yeah. for Tyreek Hill, <laughs> like, they're going to go off. All your best ball shares are going to pay dividends here, week 18. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Chargers grossly mismanaged dumpster fire of an organization. But if they're playing starters, I think they're able to move the ball enough against the Chiefs threes. I, I don't even know how much the Chiefs want to even play the twos in this game. And the defense has been absolutely horrendous for Kansas City. So mm-hmm. how much faith do you even have in the backups? I don't have much. Um, I... <laughs> I don't like it. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go with the Chargers because a special teams coordinator uh, working as the interim head coach has to finally get a win in the NFL. I'm going with the narrative here, Nate. Watch when this <laughs> this Kansas City Chiefs offense is humming with Blaine Gabbert, yeah. Blake Bell, Noah Gray, like I, just, just bums. <laughs> and then they're going to lose in the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there are several games I will not watch a snap of this week. This is one of them. So let me know how it goes. There you go. Uh, next game here, the Rams at the 49ers. San Francisco is favored by four at uh, SoFi North. Over-unders at 41.5. For playoff implications, San Francisco has clinched the NFC's number one seed. The Rams have locked in, I believe, the number six seed. What you got? You know, you go back like three, four years or something like that. You know, people are probably excited to see Carson Wentz versus Sam Darnold. You know, two <laughs> top end draft picks. No kidding. Or anything like that. And that's what we're getting this week. All I care about in this game is Carson Wentz understanding that Puka Nakua needs like four grabs, 30 40 yards some, or something, 34 yards or something yeah, like yeah. that to capture both of those records so that he could win AP 
Offensive Rookie of the Year. Um, I was listening to a guy, I forget who his, what his name was, but he was on a radio show and he's a voter. And mm-hmm. they'd asked him about AP Rookie of the Year and he was like, you know, well, Stroud's also missed two games or missed time. Like, I get that Stroud's really good, but we talk about why Brock Purdy's so good, and it's because of his coaching. He's got the mm-hmm. offensive coordinator there in Houston that came from the Niners under the same system in the same tree, you know, and is the coaching more of a reason why the Houston Texans are good, or is it the fact that they have a rookie quarterback who's playing really well? He's like, but Puka Nakua is going to break records that have stood for, you know, close to 50 years in one of these receiving records and one just a couple years ago. Um, and he's done it with multiple quarterbacks. So um, he was kind of high on the Puka Nakua thing. I was kind of cons- like shocked by that. So give me Puka Nakua to get this thing done in like the first quarter. I think they're going to feed it to him quick, and then they're probably going to bench him. Like I think they're going to get him yeah. the record, and then they're going to bench him. So, um, but I'll take the Niners. I don't know why. Um, it's in San Francisco. Carson Wentz, hopefully he sees some ghosts. But, um, man, Carson Wentz, what what a career. The guy comes in, high draft pick. Was he a number one overall? Um, he was up there. But, you know, mm-hmm. basically leads the, it leads the Eagles to, you know, the fact that they're competing for a Super Bowl gets hurt. Nick Foles wins one, and then it's over for Carson Wentz after that. Yeah. Like, pretty wild ride, but I'll take the Niners. Yeah, I, I like your Nakua argument too. And honestly, they they limped. They limped into their bye uh, with Cooper Cup missing, what was it, four weeks? He went on yeah. IR, right? And then when he came back, you could tell he wasn't 100%. But they limped into the bye week at 3-6. and six. They very easily could have been 0-9 if it weren't for the emergence of Puka Nakua. Because who are you yeah. throwing to? Tutu Atwell and Ben Skoranek? What yeah. school did that bum go to? And he's setting all these records with Cooper Cup on his team, right? Like yeah. after, even yeah. after he still played pretty well. Arguably a top two or three one-two punch at the receiver position now that Cooper yeah. Cup's healthy. And since the bye, uh, Rams are six and one. So very, very impressive. There's uh, an argument for Matthew. St- like be- I get that Lamar is probably going to win the MVP, but I think there's people out there, and this guy was talking about it too. He was like, well – Lamar doesn't have counting stats and, you know, their defense is actually the strength of their team, Mm -hmm. you know, and their coaching is really good. Um, He's like, there's, there's a case to be made for Matthew Stafford being MVP as well. And I was like, Oh my God, like go put in a Matt Stafford ticket. Like, because this team was dead in the water and then Matt Stafford came back and he's kind of led him to a playoff run, right. With a, with a really crappy roster too. So, um, and, and a offensive line that wasn't expected to be anything. So, yeah, they they've really have been outperforming. But uh, so this will be a battle of the backups, uh, and for me, it comes down to the team with more depth. That's San Francisco. That's I mean, that's stating the obvious here. Uh, but especially on the defensive side of the ball, the Rams' starting unit on defense is middle of the pack at best. How do you think their second unit is going to perform? Mm-hmm. Probably not good enough to make Sam Darnold sweat too much. I'm also taking the 49ers in this one. Uh, final Sunday afternoon matchup is Dallas at Washington. The Cowboys currently favored by 13 and a half over under very high. I believe this is the second highest on the week at 47.5 for playoff implications. Dallas, they can clinch the NFC East division title with a win. They can clinch it with a Philly loss, or they can clinch it with ties from both teams. Washington, nothing to play for. What you got in this one? I mean, boat race by the Dallas Cowboys. (laughs) Um, it sucks that it, if there is going to be like severe weather uh, in this region of the United States of America, the greatest country on the planet Earth, um, and if there's other planets or galaxies out there that have countries, if they call them countries, this is the best one. Um, and this is America's team, allegedly. Uh, mm. But it would be nice if there wasn't weather so that Dallas can you know, put up 45 on this team so that there's no doubt that Ron Rivera – gets shit canned after this year mm-hmm. tired of seeing this dude in the nfl like mm. and he come, has the nerve to come out washington's in a better place since i've been here he said that this last week <laughs> <laughs> like uh maybe the facility's a little cleaner or whatever it is but your team still stinks but i'll take dallas to win this they need it they need to win the division they need to be able to have home games in the playoffs um so until they you know if they can get into playing 
the 49ers or whoever ends up making it on the other side of the bracket. So Dallas needs to be able to secure some home field games uh, to sure. progress in the playoffs. So I think that they end up going in there and boat racing this team. No faith in Washington, which means Washington will probably win. But <laughs> uh, Looking at uh, the anytime touchdown uh, odds for backup Cowboy running backs, they have adjusted. Rico Dattle plus 195, uh, Cavante Turpin, uh, he's kind of like their gadget player, plus 285. Those would have been yeah. four digits if this were 10 weeks ago. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for Dallas, their fate is in their hands. It's all you can ask for at this juncture in the season after we've talked about some of the wild scenarios uh, some of these other teams need to get into the playoffs. But Dallas wins. They get the division. They get the number two seed. That's where you want to be. I'm taking the Cowboys. I think they will run away with this game as well. That's why I, the damn line is so high. I will say, though, that I'm hoping there's a ton of weather. Like I say, like, I hope not so that they can get smashed and then there's no doubt that this dude's going to get fired. Yeah. But I hope there is a ton of weather so C.D. Lamb doesn't catch a bunch of passes because I have a preseason ticket for uh, Tyreek Hill to be the yardage receiving leader mm-hmm. at the end of the season, right? And C.D. Lamb is approaching that because Tyreek Hill sat games and yeah, yeah. injury and all this kind of stuff. And I need this next game to be a banger. Yeah, you feel like they get ahead early and just kind of start resting some guys in the second half. Yeah. All right, next matchup. Uh, we're moving into the Sunday night, actually, final matchup. Sorry, I was looking for a Monday game. There is no Monday night football. Uh, this final one, though, is Buffalo at Miami. The Bills, road favorites, they get two and a half. Over under is the highest on the week at 48.5. For playoff scenarios, both teams are playing for something. Miami, um, they have clinched a playoff berth, so they have a wild card locked up. They can clinch the AFC East division title with a win. Buffalo can clinch the AFC East division title with a win. So win, you get a home playoff game for either team here. Buffalo can also secure a playoff berth with a tie or a Pittsburgh loss, Jacksonville loss, or a Houston Indy tie. Lots of scenarios in which Buffalo makes the playoffs here. The easiest path for them is just to get the damn win. What do you got for this one? This won't be good for my uh, Miami Dolphins to <laughs> win the division. I had like Miami Dolphins to be basically the best team in the yep. AFC this year. All well documented. Um, but I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills because weeks ago we talked about this team. Um, it, I'm pretty sure it was about 14 days before the national media picked up that Buffalo is a fucking wagon. Um, <laughs> and um, – you know, but shout out to the, you know, whatever, 25, 30 people who watch this show or whatever it is on YouTube, um, because you guys caught on to that a lot earlier. And we talked about them winning the division, making the playoffs, making a run in the playoffs, Super Bowl futures, all that kind of stuff. And it looks live. Um, I'm going to take Buffalo to win this game. I don't, who is not, is there somebody not playing for Miami or Jalen Waddles playing this week? And that's why he sat banged out up. last week, but yep. he's banged up, right? So it'll be interesting to see what what happens with them if they're just like, hey, we're content being in in the playoffs. Um, and they seem like as fun as, you know, Mike McDaniel is and everything like that. They seem like a team who would just be like, yep, hey, we could win on the road too or something like that, which is really awkward because that costs your franchise a lot of money to go on the road in the playoffs for mm-hmm. what you could charge and have for, you know, concessions and everything to have a home game, right? So, um but I'm going to take Buffalo. They looked shaky last week. They've looked shaky for a couple of weeks here and there. But they they find ways to win. And Miami is the team that when they get punched in the mouth, they find ways to lose. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take Miami to lose this game. Buffalo win the division, and then we're rolling because we got that'll be nice too because you get that nice Buffalo to win the division. You know, yeah. at plus six hundred or whatever that we got six years six weeks ago or whatever it was. So. Um, I'm taking Buffalo to win it. Yeah, Buffalo has been favored as long as I've been looking at the lines. So maybe the cat's out of the bag. Uh, looking at the the odds presently, it's definitely out of the bag. For the Dolphins, you don't have Phillips. You don't have uh, Bradley Chubb towards mm-hmm. ACL last week, I believe. Your secondary is a little banged up. I believe Howard's dealing with some stuff. Um, Jalen Waddle, you mentioned he missed last week. Not going to be 100%. He's banged up. The O-line has been banged up all season. This isn't the same 70-point Dolphins team from week three. Uh, I think that's when that happened. I'm taking Josh Allen to put the game on his back, to use his legs. 
I'm taking the defense to put pressure on Tua, force him to make a handful of mistakes. I've got Buffalo, and I've got multiple Buffalo uh, tickets in the playoffs <laughs> to win the division. Uh, I did hedge it. Nate shared a, a nice little tip for us with Miami winning this one. But, man, uh, the payday will be a lot nicer if Buffalo could pull this one out. Yeah, I'll probably have – I'll probably bet Miami, like, money line – Right, because you're gonna get oh, what is it? You know, whatever, one twenty eight, one thirty. It'll probably go up a little bit or it'll come back, but it'll probably be close to even money or whatever like yeah. that. I'll probably, I'll probably bet a little bit on the Miami side just to hedge it because I have such yeah. long odds on the Buffalo side of the house. So, yeah. um, but man, that was a good like, we did mm-hmm. a good job there figuring that out. You know, six weeks ago before they kind of went on this run. So, absolutely. Uh, props All to right. us. Pats on backs uh, on the week. To get to one unit of profit for each correctly picked game. That's what we've been doing all season. It's been going terribly. I'm wagering this week 37.5 units. Uh, Nate came in a little lower than that, picking some of these underdogs. He's at 34 units. Moving on now to the best bets. You're still carrying us on the year, Nate, despite the loss last week. What is on your mind for the final week of the regular season? I don't like much. um, And I don't even like what I'm betting but it is what I like the most, um, and that is the Houston Texans minus one. You can get that at Caesars. Uh, I think it's at MGM as well. Uh, the FanDuel DraftKings type, you know, the the mainstream marketed apps and stuff like that are at one and a half, and that's what we had here on the FanDuel line. But uh, I'll take Houston to uh, cover the one. Um, I think Indy opened as a favorite, and this moved pretty quickly to the Houston side of the house. So... Um, I'm going to be on that end. I think that they win this game. They get into the playoffs. Uh, I think I'm just going with that gut feel. Mm-hmm. Um, another one I would like, and I kind of wanted to do was Baltimore, um, plus the three, but, um, or it was four and a half when it opened up and I would have liked that, but at the three, I don't. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm going to go with Houston minus one. All right. I, I dig that. Uh, so for my best bet, I had some decent luck uh, with longest rush f- earlier in the season. Um, Gibbs, uh, uh, was it Mitchell before he went down? Uh, Achan uh, a couple times uh, this year. So I'll go back to the well in the final week of the season. Why the hell not? I'm taking James Conner, longest rush over 16 and a half yards. On the year, he's sixth in runs of 10 or more yards. He's missed some time as well. He's seventh in yards per carry, top five in rushing yards per game. Um, needs 100 yards. If you like narratives to top 1,000 on the year, do they get him there? I'm not sure, but I believe he'll get you know his normal uh, lion's share of the workload there. Also, uh, Connor has had 22, or he's had a run, sorry, of 22 or more yards in three of the Cardinals' last four games. So he has been trending up, getting a little healthier. And, and the cherry on top, Seattle, uh, very porous on run D. They just gave up over 200 to Pittsburgh. Uh, you can find this for minus 105 at Bet MGM. Currently, it's the best I've found. Nice. All right. This is the final week of the regular season. No stresses of fantasy football. Hopefully, you're not playing in a league that's playing this week. Uh, just DFS if you're normal, uh, if you're not a bozo. And sports betting uh, if the folks listening dabble. But final thoughts here before we bounce. Um, I'm going to have to listen to the week one episode of this, uh, little series we've done because we did make a bet on, uh, we made a Jersey bet. Right. And I don't remember what it was, if it was total wins, <laughs> losses, or if it was well, like total well, profit. And I think, cause well, I think it might've been total profit. Um, yeah. and if it's total profit currently I'm ahead by six units. Um, I'm down 17 and a half and you're down 23 and a half. <laughs> Um, but you have me on wins, um, three more wins on the season. So I'm going to have to go listen to that episode. I don't really like listening to what we talk about and stuff like that over and over, yeah, but yeah. maybe I should do that more. But, um, this week is for Jersey. I don't know. Like, is it regular season? Is it the full year? Cause we're going to go through the playoffs. Like we got to figure that out. Maybe tally in the best bets. I don't know. Cause that benefits me, but, um, <laughs> Looking forward to the playoffs. We talked about what we're going to end up doing for the playoffs um, because there's going to be less games. You know, we're going to do our regular picks. We're going to do a couple against the spread, uh, a couple props, and like a teaser of the week or whatever like that that we're going with. So there'll be a little bit more of what we're what we're going to be betting during that time frame. And you could tail it if you want, or you could go against it if you want. <laughs> go against um, it. <laughs> it doesn't 
doesn't bother us one bit. We're not here telling you what to bet or whatever like that. We're just telling you what we're doing and seeing if we could become profitable because that's fun. I like learning. So um, I'm going to have to listen to that episode, and we will fill you in next week on whatever that I, is. But you should I go already, listen to it, too. You go listen I already to know it. what it is. I already know what, what is, it is. What it is was it? Seattle over 500. They're currently 8 and 8. No. Yes. No, we had yes. a bet based off of who who wins this season too. I don't remember that one. I remember the Seahawks one specifically and then we changed the jersey thing cuz initially you said the loser uh is the one who would be <laughs> receiving a jersey. I was like, yeah, nah, we got to change that up. <laughs> but yeah, may- maybe there's two bets on the line here. Uh I'm gonna have to definitely that Seattle out. Seattle needs to win for me to cash uh cash on a Jared Goff jersey or something. We'll see. Yeah. Cool. But <clears throat> yeah, we will have some minor changes for the playoffs. Uh, Nate's kind of alluding to that. Looking forward to that. But thank you guys for listening, watching, sharing uh, with your dads. I've heard from Nate that they dads love uh, football podcasts on YouTube. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it's been a really fun year. Uh, I think Nate and I have both uh, learned a ton. And I know we didn't get the results we wanted with the unit totals. Wins and losses are, are great. But it makes me want to continue doing this to just refine our process and attack this again in 2024. Yep. But for Nate, for producers Nick, Oliveris and Matt Graham. We'll talk to you on the next one. Love you, bye. Nick's going to be happy you look seven years younger without a beard.